Greetings YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I have never been more nervous regarding talking about something. Which I know sounds crazy because it's a mole game, right? But this is the future of the contest. And it's interesting to see Gwynpool and Guillotine and Captain Marvel movies, Stark Spidey, Wolverine, Doom as the banner. It is a game changer, this post. And to let you know, I have not read this. I just got in a position to read this and I thought, why not have my first reaction be on microphone? So greeting summoners today. We're very excited to share our plans for the future of power progression in Marvel Contest of Champions. Now, just because they're excited doesn't mean you're going to be excited. Relics, a brand new addition that allows you to add new abilities and attributes to your champions, finally allowing you to customize your favorite champion. I don't know about you, but they always act like that's a huge deal. And I never, maybe it's just me. Again, I could be wrong on this, but I never look at my, my Hercules, for example, and think, man, I wish I could customize this guy. I don't care. I just want to use him to you know, win fights. Now, the rumor was that relics would inevitably slow down seven stars. But apparently that rumor was false. And there are going to be people like Mama Bear who think, do I want to keep playing this game? Now, I still think five stars are fantastic uh, and can still do content. I have seen people in Act 8.1 defeat all bosses with their five stars. So yeah, you get incentives to use your six stars, but that doesn't mean you can't use five stars. And I believe the same is true going to be for a six star. You're telling me that six star rank five Hercules, regardless of seven stars, uh, is, is not going to be valuable. And the seven star pool, if it's like the six star pool, is going to be so average. Hmm, should I take my sick 200 rank four, rank five Hercules in, or my seven star Rhino, right? Like that's going to be how it is. And then there's Ascension, a new way to empower your existing champions, giving them even more strength and longevity, respecting the roster you've worked hard to create. So that sounds like what we theorized with some of the questions that were asked regarding getting champions of the same, uh, or of different rarities, but of the same champion overall. With Relics coming first, we'll be focusing primarily on them in this post, but we wanted to give you all some insight into Seven Stars and Ascension as well, and how they all complete the picture of power progression in the contest. Okay, let's get to Relics. Relics are a brand new collectible that you can bind to your champions to enhance their abilities greatly. The first type of Relic we'll introduce is called Battle Casts, which allow you to summon a striker to help you during combat. Battle Casts can be obtained in different rarities, each offering more benefits to your champions, but all of which give you access to a striker and at least one other benefit. The anatomy of a battle cast. Relics will offer you several different components, each providing different benefits with which to optimize your champion's abilities. Each increasing rarity will either provide more components or better components. Let's take a look at some component types. Striker, every battle cast you get, you will give you a striker. Champions bound to relics will gain access to a striker gauge which they can fill through hits and strikes. Once filled, you can tap it to summon in a striker who will perform a combo that you can chain onto with your combo or special attacks. I mean, on paper, that's cool. And we've seen something like that in side quests before, right? With strikers. But I don't miss it because I just enjoy using one champion at a time. It's sort of like a, a solo versus a tag team wrestling match or something. Innate ability. A relic's innate ability can be unlocked and enhanced through duplicating the relic, giving your bound champion even more benefits. Slots will allow you to choose from a subset of, of effects to optimize your champion with. Ability slots allow you to inscribe runes that grant the bound champion a relic ability to synergize with their kit. I gotta be honest, I'm reading that and I'm thinking, I don't even know if I know what that means. And then attribute slots allow you to inscribe runes that improve champions attributes or boost their abilities. Now that's something we theorized for sure on the channel in the past six months. Each battle cast will be bound to any champion of a specific class and some Champions will benefit more than others from the available attributes and abilities. Still, all champions of the class can benefit from the striker. You can unbind relics and move them to another champion for a fee. That's also a big detail. The cost of unbinding begins as free. However, frequent unbinding may cause the player to incur unit costs. Every time the player unbinds a relic from a champion, the cost step associated with their next unbinding action will increase by one. Every five days, the cost step is reduced by one. I don't know how I feel about that. 
Although my guess is if I do have relics, I'm not going to be switching them up very much. There is a buffer before any cost arise to allow for experimentation before deciding which of your champions your relic should remain bound to. Here you've got the cost steps. Zero to six is zero, and then seven and above is 20, all the way up to 100. I mean, that, that scales pretty fast. All right, battle casts. Striker Venom. Inflict the bleed vulnerability debuff. Increase the potency of future bleed effects by a percent of time. Symbiotic Bond. Uh, Raven is Strike. Merciless Strike. And then bleed potency up. Mutation duration down. That is a lot. That's a lot of information. This is the Venom battle cast. It can only be attached to a cosmic champion and, by design, is targeted to boost symbiotes, specifically Venom, Carnage, and Venom Pool. This battle cast gives your champion access to the Venom Striker, which, in addition to extending your combo, will also inflict a, v, a bleed vulnerability, boosting the damage of your cosmic champion's bleed effects. The innate ability can be thought of as a relic's signature ability, Unlock and level up the innate ability by getting duplicates of the same relic. Abilities add powerful new additions to a champion's own set of abilities. In the examples here, Ravenous Strike both ramps up the length of follow-up bleed effects and the rate at which you can place them. Other notes about relics. Your account's prestige will now be a combination of the base rating of your top five champions and your top five relics. I covered that last night when my man Cole Lives Matter sent over what he saw was the early implementation of that and I said tomorrow we'll probably get some more information on it and I actually predicted that correctly for once. Usability battle casts can only be used on attackers. <laughs> We're looking into new relic types in the future that specialize in defense. Uh, screw that. Availability relics will uh, usable in some game modes at launch as we gather data on how they impact game balance. We want to roll relics out across all game modes as soon as we can. Relics will initially be usable in arenas, battlegrounds, incursions, monthly quests, side quests, realm of legends, and labyrinth of legends. Wow, arenas for relics. That's kind of odd to me. Relics will initially not be usable in Alliance Quest, Alliance War. Thank God for Alliance War, right? Back issues, the Abyss, and story quests. It's too bad for the Abyss. I feel like it's, it's so behind in terms of rewards that if it's easier to go through the Abyss at this point with them, you might as well give people that uh, option. We're excited to get relics in the hands of summoners and can't wait to see what you can do with them. Your first look at relics will come in October when members of our content creators program will be given early access to relics. Oh, you know, here's the thing. Those content creators, are their job is going to be to pump them up, no matter how they feel about it. That's just why they're there. They're Kabam's PR wing. And Katie Candy was one of the few that I really respected for being objective, and she thought that people weren't objective enough, especially talking uh, with the voice of... The common summoner that doesn't have the Paragon title or can't spend a thousand hours or a thousand dollars on the game. So I'll be a little skeptical of that, but we'll see. All right. So seven star champions. The future of progression in the contest is not limited to relics, though they will be the first for players to acquire. While relics focus on expanding the abilities and RPG elements of your champions, future rarities and ascension will focus on increasing the top end of power. The, de the details of Seven Stars and Ascension are still being worked out, and Seven Stars won't launch until sometime next year. Thank God. Followed by Ascension, but we wanted to share these all with you at once to give you a better look at the whole picture progression, not just one aspect. As with the rarities before them, Seven Stars will be able to reach new heights for health and attack and represent the absolute top end of what a champion can be in the contest. They will also have a new gameplay mechanic. Similar to how Six Star Champions brought Adrenaline to the contest, we're still putting the final touches on the mechanic, and we'll share more details at a later date. Seven stars will first appear as opponents, <laughs> oh, lucky us, in our November content, and then be available for collection later. So if they're opponents, that means that the fights are going to be harder because they're going to have more attack and health, right? And maybe they're also going to appear in arenas accidentally like six stars used to. Something that is very important to us with the addition of this new rarity is to ensure that we're respecting the existing rosters that players have built. Thank God. We know the addition of seven stars means restarting players search for many of their favorite champions. So in addition to a new rarity, we're also adding a new mechanic called Ascension that extends the longevity of not only your six-star champions, but your four- and five-star champions too. This is what I thought would happen because of the early access bundles, which makes them more money. Because let's say you want a six-star Quicksilver and you want that Ascension. Well, you need to buy that early access bundle to guarantee you the five-star because the drop rates for them on uh, Cavalier Crystals are still terrible. 
Starting November with release of 37.0, you can start collecting seven-star shards whenever you collect a duplicate of a six-star champion. Interesting. You won't be able to use those shards until seven-star crystals become available. That's nice, though. I will say that's that's a plus. Ascension, to help players reach the point where they can begin building out their collection of relics and seven-star champions, we're going to be introducing a new champion Ascension system. Ascension allows players to perform additional limit break rank-ups on four- to six-star champions. This gives the most active summoners the ability to increase the overall power of their roster. Ascension will give six-star champions enough of a power boost that their strength will be comparable to seven-stars and gives players plenty of time to build their seven-star rosters before making the move to using them more extensively. At the risk of editorializing, this is by far the most important part of our current progression roadmap and what I'm most excited about. If there's anything you take away from this post, it's that we're extending the longevity of your six-star roster and empowering five-star and four-star champions for summoners who are battling their way toward the heights of Act 7 and 8. The tuning and details of Ascension are still worked on, but stay tuned. We'll share more information with you as soon as we're ready. Why all three? I mean, this is a lot of information at once, right? We know adding three new progression systems in a short period of time can seem like a lot. Might feel overwhelming. Let's explain the process. One of the ideas we've seen floating around the community is that relics would replace seven stars. Uh, seven stars wouldn't be coming for a while for relics are because relics would offer the stats advantage seven stars have over six stars. Relics are designed to be all about enhancing RPG elements on champions, and it's important to us that they have the flexibility to do that. You know, personally, I would be way more excited about this if relics just didn't exist. Like if there was a sh- ascension and seven stars, I think I'd be on board. But the relics part almost feels like a different game to me, and that's why I have some some pause for this. I'm just just telling you what I'm thinking and feeling right now. In MCOC, additional rarities are where we boost the stats of champions, adding more attack and health. Seven stars will offer that, extending the life of the contest and providing players with even more powerful champions to tackle existing challenges. Ascension is a new concept of the game designed to elongate the life of a summoner's existing roster. Um, feel like they're stuck waiting for their next rank up progress. When we released six-star champions a few years ago, players told us that the shift felt abrupt. Well, it did. They started to announce it before we'd even completed five-star champions, and we haven't completed yet six-star champions with this announcement. So that part is still kind of abrupt, though we have had some leaks that this could be coming. With seven stars, relics, and ascension, we wanted to make sure that we're respecting your existing roster and want to give you a way to continue using your existing champions while you start to collect and rank your seven-star champions. It's also a way for them to make more money on early access bundles, even though they're not saying that in this post. Closing thoughts as we grow closer to the release of relics and the ability to customize your favorite champions, we hope that you are all excited as we are. We'll be continuing to give you more information on relics. we get closer to this. I'm not as excited as they are, but I'm also not as skeptical as I could be. I don't know. I'm thankful for the roster I have. We're watching closely, looking at player feedback on relics, seven stars, and ascension. We'll see you in the contest. Look, I, I'm actually most excited about ascension because it rewards players who've been playing a while, especially with four, five, and six stars. Like the Hercules example, I've got a max ranked, max sig, four, five, and to this point, six-star Hercules. So does that just mean my six-star Hercules automatically becomes better once this comes into the game? That'd be pretty cool. But at the same time, I also think it's even more overwhelming as somebody who could start this game for the first time. I feel like it started as like basic edition and now it's like calculus three. So I can't wait to see the feedback on this video from all of you. Let me know what you think. Uh, This was a lot longer of a video and I feel like I still sped read it, but I didn't want a 20 minute video My initial thoughts are I'm most excited for Ascension. Seven stars, I'm like, whatever. We'll worry about that next year. And Relics, I'm still not sold on at all. Especially when you factor in that the Prestige system is going to change dramatically once they get introduced. So I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I also don't want to overhype something that I don't believe in. This is just how my channel works. You got my honest feedback. We'll see what happens.